Hey, what's going on there, folks? Earthmaster back here just with a quick update on the potential to see some cool meteors over the next couple nights as we enter into, well, Friday night, uh, early Saturday morning, Saturday night, early Sunday morning. Should be seeing uh, some awesome meteors. This is all coming from the uh, Perseid meteor shower, the annular uh, meteor shower and the specific awesome reason why I may be out here tonight is well There's gonna be mosquitoes. I don't like that, but the lack of a bright moon So uh, we're talking about entering into a new moon around the 16th of this month right now It is a, a very very thin crescent of a moon a wanting crescent at 16.9 percent uh, illuminated so even with that little amount of moon that will be uh, there in the uh, early morning sky, you should still be able to see some awesome, very awesome meteors coming in. We're talking about between 50 and 70. By the way, moonrise tonight here along the West Coast will be around 1.38 a.m. So I'm not going to stay up that late, but I will be out there after dark to see what I can find out see if there's any cool meteors coming through now this is a again the Perseid meteor shower started back in July tonight and tomorrow night is going to be the peak so to speak it will be coming from the uh, radiant it will be coming from ops potentially looks like it's coming from the Perseus um, constellation there in the northeastern sky but pretty much anywhere if you can get a dark um, surroundings there away from city lights away from city uh, you know light pollution you should be able to see many meteors within uh, pretty much anywhere in the sky but uh, for the most part if you want a direction look towards the uh, Perseus constellation there in the northeastern sky uh, the meteors can be seen anywhere in the sky but a line along their path will trace back to Perseus which is pretty cool how cool is that I mean I will be out there for sure uh, seeing what all I can see. Hopefully something comes in. Uh, I'll just have to see how it plays out, right? I'm going to stock up on mosquito spray for sure. Now, according to this individual here, Kyle Waters, uh, director of the Sacramento State Planetarium, the prime time to witness the uh, Perseid meteor shower is this weekend, like I just explained. During its peak, around 100 meteors will streak across the sky every hour. The show can be enjoyed from roughly around 10 p.m. or so. Uh, but the best experience is just before dawn. Now, you got to remember that moon will be up there around 2.38, 2.40 in the morning uh, for moonrise. But you should be able to see um, plenty of meteors before that. Uh, what's even luckier is that this year's meteor shower aligns with the new moon. Of course, again, the new moon coming up here on the 16th which will obviously ensure a dark sky and optimal visibility. I can't wait. It should be pretty fun. So again, look towards the northeastern area of the sky. And um, hopefully you guys are able to fight off mosquitoes. we got a lot of mosquitoes out here in Northern California right now. Uh, by the way, just a little background information here. The Perseid meteor shower. Uh, is an annular occurrence where Earth passes through the debris of the swift tidal comet uh, as fragments of fragments of rock and ice burn at scorching temperatures of 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit upon re-entry here into the Earth. Um, they light up in the sky, creating a stunning visual spectac spe spectacle. Uh, ancient Chinese records dating back to AD 36 document this event. However, uh, as this gentleman or individual notes, uh, they're not shooting and they're not uh, stars But still it's kind of cool. I, I mean, I've always called them shooting stars um, These guys are mentioning about 50 to 70 meteors per hour at a dark site promises a captivating show So there we go anytime after dark folks is when you want to get out there and um, Hopefully this moon it's just going to be a sliver. Again, it's going to be uh, coming up around the 2.30 uh, in the morning time period here for California, West Coast area. I don't think that's going to be that much of an interference with the potential of viewing the uh, Perseids tonight and tomorrow night during the peak time. So get out there if you can. Definitely a sight to see if you like to see things shooting across the sky. I may break out my long uh, exposure camera there and see what I can get 
uh, for some um, some meteors. All right, earthquake activity. Just jumping in here real quick with an update video following this uh, Perseid video update. What do we got? Well, last 24 hours here on the globe. Looks like things are backing off here globally for the most part. As uh, far as large-scale activity goes, not really seeing anything. In fact, the largest map so far in the last 24 hours has been some activity there this morning off the coast of Japan, just outside of Tokyo here, about 58 kilometers deep into the Japan Trench. And that, Again, that was earlier this morning, so uh, not a whole lot of activity currently taking place here. Uh, over here around the Puerto Rico area, looks like things may be lighting up here slightly with a 3.7 around the Puerto Rico Trench, 47 kilometers deep, and some other smaller earthquake activity across the Puerto Rico uh, mainland region. There's some movement here across Colombia and uh, just off the coast of Costa Rica. Most of these earthquakes here from yesterday and this morning. Uh, talking about California, lighting up here slightly along the San Andreas Fault. Notice these red circles here, one on the Pacific side of the plate boundary and one on the North American side. The plate boundary in this red line here indicating that uh, separation there, but also at the same time, a lot of strain and stress been building up here in the southern segment of the San Andreas Fault. This is where the big one, potentially 8.1 magnitude earthquake will strike in the future. You know, how far in the future? Who knows? It has a lot to do with, uh, well, they, they talk about lake levels out here. Um, declining lake levels around Salton Sea and other lakes here may be buying some time, so to speak, far as preventing the big one because it is well overdue. Last big one out here was uh, uh, roughly about 300 years ago. We're talking about the big one along the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. There's activity here, 1.3 uh, outside the uh, San Bernardino region. Little swarm of activity. Uh, but I believe this is just aftershock movement following the 2.5 from earlier uh, this morning. One other earthquake here, south of Marietta, a little 0.7 near the Camp Pendleton North area. As uh, far as Northern California goes, a little spotty movement throughout the Bay Area. Not really seeing anything major going on up here at the Cascadia. It looks pretty quiet for now. A couple smaller earthquakes from this morning. And... Uh, you know, for the most part, just generally light microquakes out here across the rest of the country. Most of the oil fields out here seeing some of the uh, movement as well. New Madrid seismic zone, pretty quiet. We're not seeing any activity stirring up there. And the Yellowstone National Park. Well, let's check out Yellowstone here real quick and see what we have. Doesn't look like a whole lot at all. Um, here in the last hour, it looks like maybe some small, very small earthquake activity spiking up over here across the Purple Mountain and the Maple Creek area, but that's generally very small microquake activity below the 1.0 magnitude. And again, uh, let's see, Hawaii. Let's go ahead and check out Hawaii here. One earthquake out around the Loihi Seamount, a 3.4, 42 kilometers deep. Again, just off this uh, seamount area. It's been a little while since we've seen any movement out there across this specific area uh, and some activity around the Kilauea volcano region nothing major going on though no stirring up of the activity hopefully uh, they get those fires under control out there around Maui that's uh, kind of a scary deal out there for sure all right uh, not a whole lot of activity going on there and the rest of the globe here, as you can see, a little spotty. Only three earthquakes across the Western Pacific here. The Earthquake 3D globe calming down as well. Only some twos and threes scattered out and about. No major circles indicating no, no major movement here. Uh, there was a 4.3, it looks like, way off the coast of South Island. Now, that's a little odd one. You can see the oceanic crust out here showing a little bit of deformation due to the adjustment here along the plate boundaries. Uh, let's go check out the GeoNet servers here. That earthquake has me a little uh, concerned for that region. Let me see here. All magnitudes. Uh, I guess that's going to be this earthquake right here, right? 3.4. Unnoticeable, obviously, unless you're out there in the ocean doing some fishing, maybe. I don't know. 10 point, or, uh, 1032 p.m. local time there. That's a 3.4 at 33 kilometers deep. 
Now, that area where it struck at is way away from the plate boundary. Um, let me see. I wonder if I can bring up. It doesn't give me the option to bring up any type of different, um, you know, satellite view and whatnot. But you can you can notice here that it looks like it's occurred within this little plateau area. I can't remember the name of it. This is all obviously underwater um, with New Zealand above water, thankfully. But um, it is in that little area, again, away from the plate boundary. We have seen earthquake activity out here in the past. Um, and it's a ways away from the Hikurangi subduction zone, which is good. Uh, I think if we start seeing further uh, deeper movement or odd quakes here around the Hikurangi, that could be a bad sign for that, uh, that subduction zone. A lot of dangerous areas out here uh, in terms of plate tectonics across the subduction zones. And wherever there's subduction zones, you know, obviously we know that there's uh, potential for some large damaging earthquakes. And uh, Hikurangi sits right off the west coast here, or uh, east coast of the North Island. Many different subduction zones all around the Pacific, South America region as well, up through the Himalayas, through the Middle East. A lot of stuff out there, a lot of dangerous zones. All right, uh, so let's see what else we got. Space weather activity here real quick. Looks like things are toning back down. Not really seeing any major activity here as far as solar flaring goes. There's our sunspot to watch. Uh, but that's about it. Look over here. That's kind of interesting little feature. Magnetic hands coming up. Uh, but for the most part, 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 25% chance, X flare around 5% uh, chance here. Now, I still think the only uh, noteworthy region to watch is going to be 3395. Notice the little polka dots here of different colors indicating a bunch of different magnetic structure here within the core of the sunspot. So we'll continue to watch that. Also over here, this newer sunspot starting to grow a little bit as well, but for the most part, uh, they are behaving. So we'll continue to watch these sunspot regions. Now the potential here for night, as uh, far as your you know, viewing opportunity, uh, it's hard to say. There's definitely gonna be quite a bit of thunderstorm activity after midnight or so, uh, centered mostly around the Missouri area. Uh, portions of eastern uh, Kansas and Oklahoma and a, a good area across the Midwest and the Great Lakes area. So I'm not for sure if optimal viewing conditions or if viewing conditions are going to be optimal out there as far as the uh, meteors go tonight. West Coast, I believe so, unless you're out there in the fog. I don't think uh, we got really anything to worry about as far as viewing conditions go out here in California. Uh, radar and set. Let's go to the uh, satellite here. couple thunderstorms brewing up here in the mountains i hope these stay away uh they are heading from the south up north these are just general monsoon thunderstorms in the sierra nevada mountains hopefully again hopefully they stay away uh throughout the four corners area a little sketchy maybe far as viewing uh but again if you do have clear skies get out there and see the uh, perseid meteor shower tonight or if you want to wait till tomorrow um you know Get out there. That's the main thing I'm saying is it's kind of cool to see some shooting stars out there. That's for sure. Whatever you call them, I call them shooting stars. Meteors. Sometimes there can be some bigger ones out there and that dust that was left behind from that comet, you know. Might see uh, might see some longer duration meteors here. All right. Uh, again, have a good one. Stay safe out there and... Uh, uh, I'll probably be back here a little bit later tonight with a complete update video um, here for this Friday night. Not going to barbecue. Barbecued here a couple nights ago. I'm kind of barbecued out. I'm just going to take it easy and uh, relax. Maybe watch a movie or just uh, sit on here and uh, you know browse videos here on YouTube. Have a good one. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later. Take care, folks.